wanted to make sure to bring into this conversation Mike Miller, who's been starting the Driftless Back to the Land Cooperative, and talk about how we might go about producing food in this area. So, don't throw anything. I do raise hogs, so just, let's keep that straight. <clears throat> to give you a little idea, my background, I spent 12 years in research and development. And so I look at things from that standpoint, how to make things better, um, how to fit you know, something into a certain condition. Well, now I apply that to raising animals, and I love animals, dogs, chickens, the whole nine yards, and I blame my brother for that. But with this particular thing, and I'm gonna kind of work backwards on this a little bit in the regard that, <clears throat> There's a lot of laws and rules we can put in place, but oftentimes those get twisted, don't they? So one of the things that is a more direct, um, at least from my standpoint, more direct way, is if you go to a restaurant and you ask for a steak or you ask for a salad and it comes out and it's not what you wanted, what do you say? If you're, you know, maybe you let it go the first time, but if you really are paying a lot, you tell them, this is not right, I want it better. So that consumer choice. So Burger King, McDonald's, they started getting a lot of pressure to go back to their producers of pork and say, hey, we want things done differently. That was because of the pressure they received from the consumer, okay? So that's what I'm telling everybody, asking everybody, if you want something different, make it known if you buy pork, if you buy chicken or anything else, but particularly pork, talk to the places where you go to shop. Tell them, I want a product such and such. Now, what I'm promoting is pasture-based. Pasture-based eliminates the lagoons. You don't need the equipment to haul manure out because the animals are doing it. There's no hauling manure, there's no storing manure, to that degree. So you're, you're changing the whole dynamics of the thing. Now, we talk you know, just briefly about the consumer end, talking to your stores. The other end is the landowners. There's landowners out there who have land. They, maybe they're getting out of dairy. There's no money in dairy. So as farmers, you're wondering, what am I gonna do? Take this opportunity that I'm gonna to talk to you about more, back in the corner there, about raising hogs on pasture. It's a change, it's something we did years ago, and then we kind of lost touch with it. So our co-op is Driftless Area, back to the land co-op, and our little pitch here is back to the future farming. Because we're going back to some of the old ways of doing things, but incorporating new ways of doing this technology and electric fencing, uh, computer models so we can plan out and know. A lot of this information was done years ago, but we can know how much time do I need to have this pig on this parcel of land to produce this much manure, how much feed has to go into them, you know, whether it's forage or grain or whatever. So there's a lot of things we can combine the best of both worlds. And the other thing is, I have also heard, and we'll probably be touched on more so, is a lot of people say, well, how can new people get into farming? Well, there's, they're going back to these landowners. Most farmers are 50 plus years of age. Many of them are starting to look to get out of the farming thing. Who are they gonna turn it over to? Well, if you're sitting on 500 acres, 1,000 acres, that is gonna be very difficult for somebody to take over. But can you get them started on a parcel? Get somebody started on a parcel, young people. You know, I've had a number of people join our co-op who never farmed a day in their life, but want to. They're kind of like the modern back to the land movement. They want to do this. So how do you give them a chance to do it? So this is all about breaking down these massive farms, breaking, getting small operations going, and getting it so people can actually make a living doing that, raising animals in a good way, and enjoying the benefits, health benefits, environmental benefits. 
So when we look at these things, there's so much involved, but one of the things I looked at when we were forming this cooperative is, what do we use for our basis? Many people and organizations have, well, we're just gonna be treating them humanely, okay? Well, that leaves wiggle room for having these manure lagoons and so forth. Well, that's why we determine we're gonna go pasture-based. Make sure we're pasture-based because that forces the dynamic of the producers. If you're pasture-based, you're not gonna have 80,000 hogs run by one little outfit. You can't manage it. That's why we went with the cooperative model, giving multiple people, again, opportunity to do this. But again, it re requires, and I'm stumping for the group here, is that requires anybody who's thinking they're in a position to either ask for that kind of food or be producers for that setting. Because we know they're coming. The hog operations are coming. How do we want to fill that void? You know, we can't stop it just flat on, but maybe if we change the way they have to do things, whether it's by pasture base, whether it's by, well, you can't spray liquid manure, whether it's by changing their process to make it something doable, that's a way that we can affect change. You know, when you think of these big barges coming down the river, they don't turn all at once, do they? They have to have a long area to turn, to make those turns. And you're not gonna stop them just by putting a rope across. So you have to do things to get them to go the direction you want them to go. You know, in the industry that I was in, many times the laws and rules that were put in place didn't stop directly a piece of equipment from being built. Okay, it wasn't just a flat out, well, you can't do this. But you have to do it this way. Yeah, you can build all these saws you want, but you have to do it this way. Okay, well, it gets the end result you wanted anyways, doesn't it? Even though if they're still building saws or blowers or snow blowers or anything like that, but if you put in these parameters while still allowing them to do this, you're getting the result you want. So basically that's my little shtick on this and if anybody want, I do have some pictures in the back to give you an idea because some people just get this concept. It can't be done. We need these massive hog operations. You can't do it on pasture production. That is patently false. Just running the number, first of all, many, many of these places have to get agreements from thousands and thousands of acres to spread the manure. Well, if you got that agreement to spread liquid manure, then you could be running hogs on that same acreage. And when I ran some numbers quickly of Crawford County, Richmond County, Vernon County, there's more than enough acreage without contaminating it. You know, bring you back in time to when all these little, um, uh, just about every little town had loading point, auction houses, stuff like that. Some of them, many of them are still there, and the people who run them would be thrilled to be able to utilize them again, having people bring in animals to be shipped to another location. So you're not gonna, we're not gonna stop pork consumption. We're not gonna stop um, the need for that. But maybe we can alter how it's done. And that's the alternative that our co-op is offering. And the nice thing is everyone can be part of it.